Well, I want to take a moment to thank Shelley and the members of the COPE Committee for the opportunity to speak to you this afternoon and to welcome you all to this session. The title we're working with today, you know, devised several months ago, is How We Got Here From There, Trends in Organ Pedagogy from 1860 to 1960. And the span of years we're looking at here frames a really an amazingly active period in American organ pedagogical history from the time of the publication of the first comprehensive American organ method to 100 years later, by that time, um, so many of the really significant American organ teachers, for many of us, were heading off to Europe for their years of Fulbright study. But in between, an enormous amount of activity occurred, a lot of change, to the extent that really to do this topic justice, what we need to do is essentially stand here and have me read you an epic novel, you know, with intertwining generations of intertwining characters and themes and subplots, and we have an hour. So what I'm going to do instead is essentially distill this 100-year period in its panoramic sweep down to three short stories and a discursive footnote. And we're going to be looking at activity in the middle to later years of the 19th century. We'll leap then ahead to the decades right after the turn of the 20th century, and then we'll make yet another leap to the year 1937, which for some of you may hold significance for the publication of another you know, major groundbreaking American organ method. All of you should have received um, a copy of a five-page handout when you came in. If you don't have that in hand, you need please to grab one right now because I will refer to it frequently throughout the talk. If you'll take a moment, please, to scan down that first page, which lists some handy secondary sources that I consulted. One name is going to stand out to you right away, and it's the name of Sally Charrington Beggs, who is a professor of music and college organist at Newberry College in South Carolina. And she really, along with Barbara Owen, has been one of the two people who has delved most deeply into this topic. In particular, her uh, 1991 dissertation from the Yale University School of Music um, covers a wealth of material, and I understand that she has a monograph um, in the works right now that for those of you who are interested in this topic, when it comes out, I think it will be a must read. So please be sure to keep that you know, in mind. At the top of your handout is a reference to the American Organ Archives in Princeton, New Jersey, you know, housed at Talbot Library and overseen by archivist Stephen Pinnell. I cannot stress to you what a wonderful resource this place is and that Stephen Pinnell is to all of us interested in any sort of historical study on organs, not merely American, but internationally. And they do provide research grants for people to you know, go there and spend some time at the archives. So much of what is listed in your bibliography is material that I just happened to examine on a recent study trip there. Um, the word select is operative. You know, this is by no means an exhaustive bibliography, but I think it does give you a taste of the kinds of methods that were published during this 100-year period. I need to, with this slide, um, excuse me, acknowledge uh, Dr. Charrington Beggs once again, because in her dissertation, she breaks down categories of these methods as you see up here on the screen. And I've kind of sized them on the screen kind of in clumps to correlate with how your bibliography is organized. 
we're going to be talking more extensively about comprehensive organ methods derived from German models of the early 19th century, with just a tip of the hat to 19th century English models that became popular in America as well. But then there are there is a host of other material kind of more specific to aspects of service playing, such as books on improvisation, um, while well, for technique for peddling, Dudley Buck was a big figure in that regard. Denominational books from the mid 20th century coming out from traditions as diverse as the Lutheran and the Southern Baptist and Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, all trying to kind of coach organists through um, study on their own registration, transcription, and even, of course, theater and Hammond organs, which enjoyed their heyday during this period as well. Before launching into the first of these short stories, I'd like to ask you to take a moment for some self-referential thinking, if you would. And even, I don't know about for you, for me, it helps to kind of close my eyes, shut down other sensory input as I'm doing this kind of thinking. And I want to ask you some questions about how you remember being taught. What were the really defining questions of your career as you know, an up-and-coming organist in such areas as technique or articulation, interpretation, even in the interaction with your teachers. What did you experience or observe happening between students and teachers that worked for you? And what do you think just didn't work, that it bombed or it offended you or something about it did not feel right? What were you taught to do? What were you taught not to do at all? And even kind of getting back to the point of interaction, how was this coaching communicated to you? Was it verbal? Was it through demonstration? Um, a combination of the two? Were you encouraged? Were you mocked? What happened? What were, sort of what were the dynamics involved in your particular story as part of this organ history? Well, we're ready now for me to tell you some stories. And we're going to start in Brooklyn, in actually about 1850, if you will, with the career of John Zundel. I would be just curious, how many of you have heard the name of John Zundel before? Quite a few. OK. Well, this is his claim to fame. I'm very glad there's a piano in here that now I don't actually have to whistle this melody to you. But here, take a listen. Recognize that? Yeah, that's, that's really what the world knows about John Zundel, is that melody, and not a whole lot more. Even in the research I did on him for my dissertation, I've just been able to piece together factoids from here and there to try to construct some sort of biographical picture. But we don't know a lot. We do know that he was a student of Johann Christian Heinrich Rink, whose famous um, Praktische Orgelschule, um, Opus 55, um, issued in the years 1819 to 1821, is cited in your bibliography. And this was a tremendously influential method, not only in Germany, but also, as I'll show you later, in the United States. 